Um, how are you word campers doing? Good? This is the most fun I've ever had camping, I just have to say, because, and I've never been camping, so this is exciting for me. Um, my name is Elizabeth Pampalone, and I am the Jax computer chick, so I'm from Jacksonville, obviously. Go Jaguars. Um, <laughs> all you Giants fans, I love you. Um, and I am going to be talking about plugins. And the first thing that came to mind when I thought about plugins was plug and play. You know, like all those things say, oh, you just do, you just put it in out of the box, it works. Not always the case. So I decided to do my topic on this. And this morning, as I was driving over, I thought of another great slogan that uses the word plug in, which is plug it in, plug it in. Everybody knows that, right? Okay. So I am the queen of networking, the plug in princess, and the court jester of creative ideas. I have three companies, and we use plugins for everything. So, I'm going to talk about a bunch of them that, um, that I use, ones that I haven't used but I'm planning to use, so there's a couple special ones in here, and also the entire PowerPoint presentation will be on my website, jackscomputerchick.com. Okay, so e-commerce is the first one I'm going to cover because it's kind of one of the biggies. Everybody, oh, I need to sell something, so you got to, you know, use e-commerce. And I have four plugins for this. The first one is called Etsy 360. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah. This is one of my favorite plugins for people who want to increase their awareness and have their own website with their Etsy items on it, but also still have Etsy pulling for them and doing all the extra SEO and, and marketing that they do as well. So this allows you to actually integrate both of them together. You use this plugin, you put in some API stuff not very difficult and once you get it set up you actually have everything that they put into Etsy streams over into their website automatically so it's a really great plugin it sets up separate pages for all the um, different products and it also sets up um, search functions and things like that so you can actually search by categories have a page just about one category you can show all their categories or just one category so it's really, really a great plugin. It does a lot of little things, and they're actually keep constantly improving it. So every release, there's a new feature, and you as the designer, developer, or even user, you can write the guy and say, hey, you know, can, I, can you add this, can you add this? And he's actually compiling lists of all the new features he's going to be adding. I use this plugin with Blue Chic themes. It really flows well. There's no issues with it that I've found so far. So that's the reason I have Blue Chic on here. Um, sometimes when you have those plugins that interact poorly with other themes can be a little bit of a problem so I just decided to put that up there for you in the PowerPoint at the very top the title is a link to the actual WordPress plugin and then also if you say it's see it in action that's actually a site that I've built that has that plugin on it currently working so if you get the um, PowerPoint you'll be able to click on all those links and see all of the information that way um, I have a lot of these, so I'm going to kind of go through them um, just without clicking on any of the links, and you guys will have a chance to do that. WooCommerce, of course, this is one of the really big ones. Um, one of the things I found is that you want to find a, a theme that works with that plugin rather than the other way around. So instead of having, I use um, a lot of canned themes and then I customize the heck out of them, but um, a lot of the time I will actually use, find a, um, a theme first that says it's Woo compatible. And then I'll, if I'm going to use Woo specifically. So usually it's the other way around. You have a theme and then you add a, an e commerce um, plugin. But um, when I use WooCommerce, I try to find the um, theme first since I already know I'm going to use um, WooCommerce. Um, and then, of course, there's a couple of places that I've used that, and there's a link for that. Another one, I had a client, um, she just wanted to sell one product. That was it. She had one product, home based business. She literally sat on her couch and made these things all day long. So I didn't want to set up a whole huge system when she was just selling one product and she was using PayPal. So I used Market Press, and it was just enough for what I needed. It wasn't going to give me all this huge back end, have to load all this extra script for all these categories that she's never going to use. So I did use Market Press. I did use it with um, Blue Chic and also with some of the... Um, some of the free themes you can get with WordPress, it also works really well with those. So 
Um, that's the one I use for that. There's also one which I didn't put on here, which is, I think, in my um, list at the end. And it's actually just a short code. It's a plugin that creates a short code for you to use with, power, uh, with a PayPal. So literally, you, in this short code, you put in your title, your price, if there's any shipping involved, and it sends all that information to PayPal, and then you really use PayPal as your, your management system for your whole e-commerce. So all you're really doing is installing a plugin for a short code, and it's just for like one product. So there's a couple of options for people with just one or two products where you want to do something really quick. Any authors in the room or people who use, okay, anybody who's has done websites for authors? Um, I've done several for authors. I love working with them, but when they've written multiple books, it's hard to figure out, okay, do we want to go the dropship Amazon route, or do you want to do the Barnes & Noble thing, or are you doing the e-com, or the e-book thing? So we've, I actually found this plugin called My Book Table, which is a really nice plugin. It has all these features that actually integrate Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble. There's just about 30 different bookstores that it integrates with, pulls all the code in, so if their book is sold at that store online, you can pull that um, link in. It'll give these nice little buttons that you can kind of see in this really fuzzy screenshot that I took. And you can also um, link to Goodreads. And the reviews from Goodreads can be pulled in. So it really does this nice job of integrating all these things that are kind of pulling from lots of sources onto one page of the site, and then of course it creates a separate page for each book as well. Um, it can be an ebook or an actual physical book that when they click the button for Amazon, it links them to. It actually has a separate Kindle button and a separate Amazon button um, for all of those. Yes? It's through, you have already done the Kindle upload to Amazon. It's, it's really what it's for is at the after point after all that. So it's not to actually publish on that, but it's for once everything's published somewhere else. It also integrates with, um, with iBooks, too. So uh, I really like this one for, for authors who have their books kind of scattered all over, and it brings everything into one nice little package. OK, podcasting. How many people have done a podcast before? I love podcasting, especially since the iPhone uh, is so great at picking up sound, I think. <laughs> um, I do several podcasts, and they're all, I think a couple of them are linked on here. This is my favorite plugin is Blueberry. And this does allow you to actually upload your MP3 to your website, put it into Blueberry, and then Blueberry will take it from there into iTunes for you. It does everything. So you just put it in once, put your link and put your um, MP3 file into your website, and it pulls everything in. Um, it also does a really nice job of displaying your podcast on your website directly. So if you want them to just listen to your podcast on your website, you can do that. Or it'll also send it to iTunes. So I found it was hard, finding a hard time to actually take time to go to iTunes and then take time to put it on the website and then take time to put it over here and there and everywhere. So this is a really great plugin that kind of streamlines the process um, once you have your completed MP3. Uh, somebody was asking me the other day if it cuts it and like edits it for you. I'm like, no, it's not that great. <laughs> but um, I do use iMovie for that kind of stuff. I've used Audacity. I've used very simple products where you can just cut and, and paste um, GarageBand. So just use those simple products, um, and you'll be able to create a really nice podcast and then use this plugin to actually get it all online in one nice, succinct area. And if you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. Uh, podcasting can be, it, it's either you use Blueberry or you don't. It's, it's kind of a, a two-way two thing. You either use it or you don't. So there's some themes that I found that actually do podcasting really well. They don't do the whole iTunes upload and all that stuff. However, they present your podcast in a really nice way. So this is one, and it's actually a podcaster theme. It has ways for you to set them into categories and do extra tagging and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you can have a nice little display with an image. and So it really does a nice job of displaying it really well. But this does not really integrate with an iTunes or a, a Libsyn or things like that. 
So you really have to have your MP3 file and it has to be completed and then you have to do all the other work yourself unless you use Blueberry on this platform, which you can. Native church is one of my new favorite themes and it's really a multi-use, multi-functional theme. Uh, but it does have a podcasting section and it's for sermons, but I've used it for other things as well. The, um, the link actually is to uh, a church site that I've used it on recently, but it does have a lot of really nice features for doing searches and they have a lot of good tagging features and things like that. Um, so it's not really a plugin, it's a theme, but I did want to mention it because it does have a podcasting aspect, which some sites don't. And I think it also does allow you to upload an image for a podcast. So it does a little more than just, hey, put your, your MP3 file in here. It gives you option to have a little more visual. Right underneath, see it in action, it says Mega Menu. And I put this in because um, this is also a plugin. Uh, this theme has a thing called a Mega Menu. So when you hover over one of your tabs, it actually gives you this whole huge drop down that has like four columns. And then it has all this other stuff in it. You can put videos in the, in the mega menu. You can put um, different lists of things, different images in this huge drop down. I mean, it's, it's big. <coughs> and they actually do a really nice job of making it work on mobile, too. So it's kind of interesting. But that's not on all themes. And I really like this concept of having this huge menu that you can kind of stuff everything in so that you don't have a 1,000 menu items, which is what some people want, which I don't get. So I try to condense everything down and say, okay, let's hide all this junk <laughs> over here. And this is nice one button that says engage. So it's like, oh, I want to engage. And then you get this huge monstrous menu. So mega menu, that's another plugin that does just the mega menu. So this theme does it, but I wanted to make sure that you guys had an alternative if you're not going to use this theme, that you can actually have a plugin that does mega menus. The ever important and all important opt-in. So I know that um, I went to one of the talks earlier and someone mentioned a couple of things, which was really good. And I use MailChimp. And the, the way I use MailChimp for my opt-ins, I actually put links. I use their little EEP URLs. And I put them on my website with a graphic, takes them to the form to fill out. And then I have the thank you sign up form or the thank you form for the signups take them back to my website to a specific area. So that's how I do my opt ins. Um, I don't like to have like the hanging, hey, come sign up with us, you know. Um, those are kind of getting annoying to me. So I try not to do that to my clients. And if you guys go on my website, you'll see that there's a WordCamp Orlando button. And if you click on that, it'll take you to a form. You put in your email address, and then it'll take you to the page that has this lovely PowerPoint on it. So I do use MailChimp as my opt-in, but I do it really simply. But this is something I found which made a whole lot of difference in the way I do opt-ins. Um, I do have my link on my website, so you can click to subscribe and all that great stuff. However, there are some people that just ignore that. And I don't want to have that hanging box that comes up as like, hey, you can't see anything else right now because I'm in the way. So I found this thing called Hello Bar which is kind of a plugin, but it's actually a custom plugin that the website gives you. So you can't just go download this from you know, WordPress. You actually have to go to the Hello Bar website, sign up, it's free. And <clears throat> once you sign up, they'll actually give you something to download. And that's your plugin for you. It has to do with your website. You can have your um, Hello Bar on multiple websites. If you have one account, you can have multiple sites. It also gives you A-B testing for different um, keywords if you're using different, like they have up here like 24-hour sales, save 30%, click here to learn more. I use mine if you want to unlock the free stuff that's on my site. So I have these little freebie things. And at the top it says, if you want to unlock the free stuff, and then it has a little button that says unlock, and it takes you to a form, fill in with your email, and then it gives you, actually sends you a password. And then that password takes you to the website. Um, that has all the free stuff on it. So the Hello Bar is a nice way of kind of announcing things or giving people free things or giving them some way of opting in without being like really obnoxious in my opinion. So just a nice little bar at the top and you'll see it on my website when you go there. You can also customize the colors 
and all that as well. But it, it does have the hello bar um, H in the corner, and there's not really much you can do about their branding. It's kind of that way, but it's free. So, <coughs> Local business essentials. Most of the companies I work with are local businesses. I do have some um, clients out west and in Texas and things like that. But I work with a lot of local business. So there's some things that you need for local businesses that other sites may not need, especially if they're just online sites. So this is one of them. This is actually a paid plugin, <clears throat> but this is my new best friend. I have been on s s doing so many local sites recently where <laughs> the stupid maps just don't work. <laughs> They look fine on the, on the desktop version, and then you get them into a smaller screen, and then they're cut off, or they're not centered right, and it's just a mess. And also, sometimes those contact pages that some of these themes have, where they build the contact page in for you, which I like to use a lot of canned themes, the map, just uh, no. So I found this, um, this little short code, essentially, and it's just a very simple short code. You put the short code at the beginning, you put the short code at the end, put your address in the middle, and it gives you this nice, beautiful, responsive map. Keyword, responsive map. So, <clears throat> and it does pull from Google Maps, and it, doesn't also, it also doesn't have that, um, you know when you're signed into Google, and when you go to a map, your picture's in the corner? Every time my clients see that, they're like, why is your picture on my map? Take your picture off my map. And I was like, okay, listen, it's not, my picture's not on your map, but this eliminates that, which I was so happy about. So, is really a great plugin. It does cost like five or ten dollars, but it was so worth it. Okay, <clears throat> this is kind of one of what I call my grandma plugins <laughs> because it's very old school. You can jazz it up if you make your own custom um, image, but it is kind of old school looking. And a lot of their, their theme um, options are really old school. But it's a way for you to generate individual vouchers or like um, I had a client who wanted to give a coupon, but they only wanted you to be able to use it once, and they wanted to know who was using them, like tracking who was coming in. So what this does is it actually generates a, a voucher, and then it gives you this super long <laughs> code. It's like H75. It's like all these numbers and letters. And the, the company, when they bring the voucher in to use it, like for a free massage or whatever it is, the company will take that and keep them on file so that they can actually track, oh, you've been here before. We know you already had your massage. No, go turn around and go back. Or you have to pay me 60 bucks. So that's one of the things I use it for is when a client wants to give a discount or some kind of offer, but they want to make sure they can track who's actually coming in. The plugin itself is not a tracking device. It does not do that. However, when you have someone sign up with a certain email address and they've been emailed that voucher, they can print it out. If they try to sign up again, no, it won't let you. But it does not keep track in like a database form or whatever that says these people signed up. It doesn't do that. So it's kind of a good plugin for you know little things, but like I said, it's more of a local type thing. For online companies, it doesn't really make sense. In that case, I would use something like um, Woo Themes and their coupon codes, things like that. <coughs> Business hours is another one. And this one is really nice because you can actually put in when you're on vacation and it'll stay closed or it'll say they open tomorrow at 10 a.m. So just like Google does when you're on Google and it says these people are closed right now but they open on Tuesday at 8, then this is a similar thing. You can also drop down, it has like a little mini version and then you can expand it while you're on the site and it shows you the whole week. Um, and I have this on my site as well. Currently, I'm open from 9 to 4 today, but I'm not really. Um, <coughs> you got to remember to set it. you got to remember to set it. You can schedule in this, though. So if you're going to be gone on December, the whole week of Christmas, you could set it right now, but it wouldn't show up on your website until the week of Christmas. And then after Christmas is over, it'll automatically come back because you said only these days I'm going to be closed. So it kind of, once you set it, it does automatically turn on and off, but you have to actually set it. And there's two other ones, opening hours and a ATP business hours. They're a little more fancy. This one's very, very simple, and I like that because I don't want it to be cluttered about what it looks like. I want them to just say, oh, hours, okay. But um, the other ones are a little more fancy. Any questions? 
<coughs> okay, store locator. Some of my clients have multiple locations. This can get tricky, especially if you're using um, the Google map, the five second Google map. You can still use that because you can put multiple Google maps on multiple pages and make a page for each you know, location. But this actually allows you <coughs> to use a map and you pinpoint where the locations are. And you can also give them little designations, like these have um, little symbols you can use. I think they're font awesome symbols, things like that. So it does give you a little bit of a search function. People can put their zip code in. I haven't used it on a client site recently, so I don't have any links for it. But it does work really well. And it really depends on the theme. It can get really funky if you throw it in the wrong theme. So you'll have to try a couple things. But it is a really great one for um, doing kind of a citywide or even statewide where they're looking for multiple locations. Events. <coughs> one of my companies is um, centered around events. And a couple of the plugins we use on our, um, one of our company's websites is going to be in here. But one of the events plugins is in here as well. <coughs> the event manager and locator. Um, this one allows you to have your map and your calendar in one piece, in one page. So when you put in a calendar item and you say, okay, this event is on this day, at this time, in this place, the map will pick it up and also show you all the pinpoints for that day. Or it'll give you their Google listing and things like that. So, and you can add it to your Google Calendar directly, and you can add it to iCal directly. So <coughs> it's one of those that if you need this specific type of piece where you can see locations and dates and times all in one, um, it works really well. And you can also um, do the whole, kind of like the whole Eventbrite thing right on your website. So it does um, the ticketing and things like that and when people are, you know, signing up and registering. Does it accept payments as well? Um, <coughs> this one I don't know if it accepts payments. I believe it does, but I don't know for sure. Not 100% sure. This is one that I use all the time everywhere because Meetup is ish free-ish. <laughs> I want to say free-ish um, because for users it's free, which is great because then anybody can go on and see everything. But for developers, or if you're, you know, if you're creating a group and it's, it costs money. But um, they do have a plugin that works directly with WordPress and you can pull in, uh, automatically pull in your events. If you go to my website, you'll actually see it on the front page and those are my, um, I have a group called Get Tech Savvy and those are, all my stuff comes in through this particular plugin and it shows up on the, on the, as a widget, you can put it on pages. So it's really good though. It does, um, it does pull in automatically, which I don't want to, I don't want to deal with Meetup and then managing Meetup and also managing the Meetup plugin on my website. I want to just say, here, put this stuff here and that's it. And I'm done. Calendars. Um, calendars have been the bane of my existence for a long time. So I have found three, and only three, after thousands. And by the princess of plugins, I mean I have installed and uninstalled thousands. I probably spend three to four hours of every single projects that we do on just plugin research. Just, just that by itself. Because it can take a really long time just to find one good one. Ajax event calendar is really good because I use this on a site where there are a lot of members that were logging into the back end of WordPress and they could actually all update their own calendar items and put them into categories and then the administrator could go in and approve them or disapprove them, you know, go through and actually admin, you know, the, all the new stuff that had come in. So it was a really great way for offloading the administrator with all the, oh, hey, put my event on, oh, hey, put my event on. It's like, no, log in yourself and you can just add it. And then I'll just say, sure, I'll just check a box. So it does a really nice job of presenting it very cleanly. The only thing it doesn't do that I don't like about this is it doesn't allow you to add it to a calendar. So you can't pull the information to Google, can't pull the information to R through RSS, so it's just kind of there. Um, if you have a lot of managers on it and people are visiting your calendar all the time rather than pulling a feed from it, this is a really good one. If you need to pull a feed, this is your calendar. <laughs> Has anybody used this calendar? I love this thing. Um, 
I use this one for a couple of our sites and it's really, really helpful because it allows you to pull feeds in, it allows you to push feeds out, and it has a lot of really great features to it. It's clean, it's classic, it just has a really beautiful uh, aesthetic that you don't have to do a lot to. There's some things you can do with making it look um, different ways. It does get to, you get into a paid version when you want to do a little more with it than what it just offers from the free, free version. But I use the free version on a lot of our stuff and it works just fine. <coughs> um, you can also import your Facebook events, which I think is really cool. <coughs> this one is for <coughs> my fancy clients. The ones that are like, yeah, functionality is great, but I want it to look like I spent a lot of money on it. <coughs> and this is what they use for their calendar. I use this on a couple of sites as well, but this is really a pretty calendar. It does some nice stuff on the back end. You can actually sell tickets through here. If you have a link to do, um, you can put your PayPal in and it'll sell it, you can sell a ticket through PayPal. Um, what else does it do? It has a nice calendar. I like that it does the color-coded um, different dates on there. And it also has different ways you can arrange it. So agenda, month, week, day, things like that. <coughs> it does have a really nice presentation when you actually open up one event, rather than just looking at you know, the, the length of all the different days. It does really nice page presentation. So <coughs> you can do a lot of HTML in the body to make it look really nice. And then you can have uh, multiple toggles and things like that in the center. So I've used this on a couple of things. And um, it works really well, but you, I, I, you can also integrate it with Eventbrite and Meetup. So if you're using it for Meetup, <coughs> you can just say, oh, this connects to this Meetup um, event that's happening. And it'll actually pull the information from Meetup, put all the information in so that you have your map, you have your location, you have your um, time and your date and the organizer's names and all that stuff already in there. And at the very bottom of the map, you can type in your address and get directions. <coughs> so it keeps them on your page longer rather than them clicking a link and then going to Google and then going, you know, going back, all that stuff. So it keeps everything on one page. Have you ever tried on modern tabs uh, the events calendar form? No, I haven't. <coughs> I've seen it, but I haven't tried theirs yet. Mobile. <coughs> now I'm just going to say one thing. <laughs> that is not a sideways eight. That is an infinity sign. <laughs> okay? I have one plug-in for mobile. And there are an infinity number of themes, and I'll tell you why. This is my mobile plugin. If your site absolutely ha cannot be mobile responsive, this is the plugin you use. I have a couple of clients that use this because they really liked the way their old sites functioned. And they didn't want to mess it up, so I built them a mobile site. Another person actually wanted, they liked the way their site looked, even though it was already responsive. They wanted it to have certain features almost to look like an app. So we created special graphics and put them in, a, you know, kind of on top of each other so it looks like it's an app and you touch the button and it takes you to. So there's different ways of using this, but really just, just responsive. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I heard um, a report the other day that companies are now, and I don't know if anybody here is doing this, but companies are charging more for responsive design and in my, for what I do, I work with such, I'm going to call them micro businesses because that's what they are, um, that we, we just do the themes that are responsive and we try and do as much as we can with that because they don't have the budget for the res like big responsive design. So we don't charge extra for it because we try and do it as inexpensively as possible for the client. But responsive, 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 responsive. And if you don't know the word by the end of the day, you'll have to look it up. So, But there are thousands and thousands of themes that are responsive. And I don't think there's very few anymore that aren't responsive. Also, be sure that when you're doing testing on a responsive design, um, to make sure you're checking it on a couple of different devices. There's a couple of websites that you can use that are really good for checking different um, sizing. And uh, I think somebody mentioned earlier in one of the um, tracks I was in, it's not about the device, it's about the size of the screen. Because 
the devices are going to keep getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. I mean, they got the watches now. That's like the tiniest thing ever. And then you've got like these, you know, my, um, the note, which is like a phablet. You know, it's like, oh, hey. So um, you want to make sure that you're not just testing devices. You're testing sizes. So, yes. Um, I'll have some links on here. I don't have them off the top of my head, but I'll put some links on. Do you have a question? Yeah, how do I know, uh, I'm working with one clerk here, who bought the thing, how do I know where you click to sell it? Um, if you use one of these different websites that helps you um, look at it from a you know, really big computer screen, so like a huge size, and then it shows you on smaller sizes as you go down to like 300. Yeah, that sometimes does work. Um, but if you notice that it's not doing what it's supposed to as you get smaller and it's not conforming right, then you'll want to make sure you're switching your theme because, or you're, cha or you're actually going and adding the coding to make it responsive. Is there a website <coughs> there are several, and I'm going to put them on the, um, the links for the, for the web page that I have for you guys. Yeah. <coughs> You can resize your browser. Yeah, that's an easy way of doing it. However, some of the responsive sites now are building it into their <coughs> code that it's actually doing it based on if it's a mobile device. So it's pulling from, is this an iPhone? Is this an Android? I don't like those themes as much because they're actually device specific. They're pulling the name of the device and they're saying, oh, this is an iPhone. I should look like this. Rather than saying, oh, this screen is 300 by you know, on infinity, I should look like this. So when you're looking for your design, you can actually go into the CSS code and you can look and see how they're you know, doing some of the um, CSS coding based on sizes or based on devices. And you can do look at that in the documentation too. But resizing your screen works. There's also a Chrome plugin. Um, I think it's called User Agent or something like that. And it's a Chrome plugin. And it actually will let you look at it if, as if you were looking at it on an iPhone or on in Safari or in Internet Explorer or in Internet Explorer 8. Everybody loves that one, right? Um, and it will actually pull different kind of different configurations of it for you, which is kind of works. Um, but it's not always that exactly accurate. It kind of gives you a quick, easy way of doing it. Okay. I have one plug-in for essentials, and this is kind of not really an essential, but a lot of themes are starting to say, oh, you should put that um, ID in there. We're not, we don't care what the page name is. We want the ID. Well, WordPress doesn't show you the IDs anymore. So there's a little plug-in called Reveal IDs. And on every page, every uh, post, anything that's a post type, you actually can see the ID kind of in between second and to last column in there. So I had one site I was working on, a native church actually, that theme, actually when you do the mega menu, it doesn't let you just pull pages really like, oh, there's my page. It's like, what are your IDs? And I'm like, 1,036, 1,089. <laughs> so I had to go back and find all the IDs. But this is a really quick and easy way of doing that. I use Contact Form 7, and I don't usually use Divi as my theme, so I found some code to make it look, make Contact Form 7 look like a Divi contact form, which I thought was cool. So I was like, this is Divi, this is not Divi, that's Contact Form 7, and there's some code there for you guys if you want to make it look like Divi. Because uh, I think Divi looks really clean and sleek, and Contact Form 7 doesn't always look so sleek. So there's just some CSS code and stuff there. Um, I do use Contact Form 7 a lot. I'm starting to use Gravity Forms more because Contact Form 7 is having issues with, I don't know whose issue it is, and I don't really care, but they're having issues with GoDaddy and WordPress and Contact Form 7. For some reason, you can't send an email to the same email address that you're using the domain. So if it's hello at networkandjacks.com, and you're on networkandjacks.com, you can't send an email. It's like it gets glitchy. Some of them go through, some of them don't. And then the ones that don't, of course, the ones you want. So um, I've kind of used some workarounds for this, putting them on different domains and forwarding and stuff like that. But I'm just starting to use Gravity because it's getting annoying. However, I do use this on some of my websites still. If you're not on GoDaddy, it's probably perfectly fine. 
<coughs> SiteGround's giving away some stuff out there. I don't know. <laughs> um, membership and directory. This has become my new favorite area of WordPress and plugins. Has anybody used Member Mouse yet? Oh my gosh, you all are missing out. Um, Member Mouse is the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate membership plugin. It is a monthly subscription. However, it saved me so much time and money. I don't care how much it costs me. <laughs> I'm like, I will pay you guys because this is great for tracking memberships, free trials. They do bundles. You can restrict pages. I was using Paid Memberships Pro. I was using a bunch of other stuff, and I kept having these what I called security holes where people would be like, get on a page and comment. And I was like, how did you get to that page? That page is supposed to be restricted. You can't get to that page. And it was just all these holes, and people were like getting through to stuff, and they're like, oh, I saw your, uh, your calendar thing. And I'm like, wait a minute. You're not on my list. How did you see my calendar? And they're like, well, you know, I just went to this other page and clicked down. I'm like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So this really does restrict things. If they go to a page that they're not supposed to be on, it's like, I'm sorry, you don't have access. Would you like to buy some access? So it also integrates with MailChimp. And if somebody cancels, it sends them all these little nice emails like, oh my gosh, your account's expired. You should totally upgrade. Um, so, so I can totally do that again. Um, so I love Member Mouse. It has a lot of great features. I haven't even dug into all of them yet. But I'm using it for one of my websites, and it's the bomb. So I love it. And their support is super fast, by the way. <coughs> this is actually a directory. It's not a membership um, thing. It's a, just a directory, but it's called Connections. And it allows people to actually go in <coughs> and actually update their own listing. Some of the plugins don't let you do that. They make the administrator do all the work. But this one actually lets you update your own listing. It is a paid plugin. There are a couple little paid like add-on things you can use. I have a link so you can see one of the sites that I used it on. Um, <clears throat> it was pretty easy to set up. You just have to get the right little add-ons that you want to make it look the way you want it to. But it do, I think I used two add-ons and then the main plugin. And the add-ons were like um, visual stuff, so it wasn't really that difficult. But that was a, a membership site that I did that didn't have any payment options. It was just, hey, sign up and you're a member. So it works really well with the, um, integrated with WordPress users without having to use an extra plugin for membership. Images. I love Metaslider. You can put it anywhere. And you can make it whatever size you want. And you can use its, um, they have like the Nevo slider and the Flex slider. And there's so many different ones. And I just love this little plugin because you can just literally stick it anywhere. I use a Kismet for my spam filter. I don't mind it. I think it's great. I always get a frowny face, though, for some reason, because <laughs> it's always free. Um, but for my clients, my clients get the frowny faces because I log in as them. But um, you can pay for this. You can do the donations. They have upgraded versions and pro and all that stuff. So. But I do like a Kismet. They do block a lot of the spam. And I know there's some other ones out there, but this is the one I just use because it's quick and easy. Testimonials widget. I'm going to kind of blow through a couple of these really quick. Um, this one's pretty good. I like this one better. WP customer reviews. This one has a star rating. This is on my website if you want to see all the great raving reviews people have written about me. Um, <coughs> and this is my last thing which is the WYSIWYG builders. So I sometimes like to do the little widgets as a page, like make, all, make my page full of widgets. So there's three of them that I like to use. Um, the one I'm using right now is Site Origin. That's on my site. That one seems to be pretty much the easiest. It doesn't have a lot of glitches, so I'm pretty happy with it. There's two other ones there as well that are pretty good. Now, I'm going to show you this. This is why you need to download this plugin. I mean, this um, PowerPoint presentation. These are the rest. These are all ones, if you see the double arrow, I've used it. If you don't see a double arrow, I haven't used it yet, but it's on my list. Any questions? You can go to my website, jackscomputerchick.com. I'll be right here if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. It's my first WordCamp. I'm very, very excited, so I'm so glad you all came. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. More questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I find them working on RSS feeds and one shot for them. It's not, I'm not trying to figure it out. Uh, I don't know where to get the rest of my orders from. 
Um, it depends on what you're pulling the RSS in, feed in for. Is it going to display as just uh, links? There's some post importers that you can use if that's what you're trying to achieve. Um, I'm not really sure exactly, but there's some post importers. There's also a thing, a, a plugin that's for taking um, pages from one area and actually embedding a page on another page. So we did. Um, there's actually a plugin that pulls the entire page. So you can make your page over here or make a post over here and it embeds it on a page. So we did that with coupons for one client. Um, I haven't used it yet, but um, BuddyPress is the one I know of that's like community-based. Um, the only other one I would say is MemberMouse because they are, it is a membership plugin, and um, you can do it free or paid. So, I mean, you're going you're gonna to pay for it as a developer, but they, you can do free or paid um, versions of it for your members. Do you have a question? Yes. It can be added to any page, post, or I use it on just one page and activate it for one page. But when you actually are creating a page or a post, it'll show it on every single post type at the bottom, and you can activate it or not. Any other questions? Yes. Um, it, it is a little bit cumbersome sometimes, but if you have a lot of products, I recommend it. If you don't have a lot of products, I would look at one of the other ones that I have listed, um, Market Press or something smaller, if it's like one or two products. Usually people either have a thousand products or they have like five products. So it kind of depends on where your client is with that. Yeah, that's that's the big part. Yes. Um, there actually is. You can actually embed uh, Facebook photo, like an album on Facebook, into a page on your WordPress site. I don't have that one off the top of my head, but I'll see if it's on my. I think it's on my list, so it should be on there. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Hello, Barb. Yes, it's responsive. Hello Bar is responsive. Yes. Yes. Wish list member exchange, no, but I will look at them up and um, see if I'll add them to my list. Yes. Video embedding. There's a thing called embedresponsibly.com. Has anybody heard of that? I love that site, Embed Responsibly. Um, and you basically put your link in for YouTube or Vimeo or whatever it is, and it will give you the responsive code. There's some little tweaks you have to do sometimes to make it work exactly right with some coding. But once you figure it out, you can kind of basically replicate it for every single video that you do on that site for you know, going forward. Embed Responsibly, that's a website. So it's not a, yeah, it's not a plugin. The hello, or, yeah, the hello, hello bar. No, not yet. Not that I've seen now. <laughs> it's a nice little marketing tactic. No, it's free. It's a free plugin. Hello Bar is free. Any other questions? Thank you guys so much. Thank you.